Today I'm going to share with you a few of my budgeting and saving ideas for your spring and summer travels for 2020. Stay tuned. Hi guys and welcome back. It's me Sharon. Make sure you hit that subscribe button right there and that one too to give me a thumbs up and also hit that notification bell. Hit it twice so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And today as I said earlier I'm going to share with you some of my budgeting and saving ideas for your travel in 2020. For me and my family we decided that travel was important for us. We enjoy it quite a bit. I usually begin my travel planning a year in advance. So this is about the halfway point for me. So I started last summer for this summer and so on and so on. I do that every year. So by the time I come back from vacation this summer, I will then begin planning for 2021. So that gives me ample amount of time to put together and, and prepare for the vacation that we desire. So I'm going to share with you a few of the tips that I use. One of the first things that I do is I plan my destination. I decide where is it that we want to go. Is it going to be a family vacation? Is it going to be a couple's vacation? Or is it going to be a girlfriend's trip? Is it going to be a guy's trip? You determine the type of vacation that you're going to take. Where is it that you want to go? Once you've picked your destination, you then want to set up a separate vacation account if you don't already have one. It's super easy to do. You just go to your bank where, that has your pre-existing account and set up a savings account. If you don't already have one, if you do, then allocate that savings account for travel. Once you've picked your destination and you've got your account set up, then you need to kind of get a ballpark idea of how much it's going to cost you to go to that particular destination that you desire. So I suggest you go online and get an idea of what you're going to do. If you're taking a trip that's all inclusive, that kind of helps because it narrows down exactly what you need. Or contact your travel agent if you're going to be using a travel agent to make your arrangements. But you want to include your airfare, you want to include your tips, you want to include uh, baggage because now airlines require you to pay per baggage. So you want to include your airfare and your baggage. You want to include tips that you'll have to get. You want to include food. You want to include gas. You want to include if you're going to rent a car once you get to your destination. Pay for parking at the airport. Is it in the United States or is it international? Uh, entertainment. Entertainment once you get to your destination. All these things you're going to write it out on a piece of paper. Take into mind all the things that you will be doing from the moment you prepare to pack to the moment you come home to unpack. You have to decide whether you want to do it big or whether you want to stay on a budget. So calculate the amount of funds that it's going to require for you to do it the way that you want to do it at the destination that you've chosen. So once you have that figure, once you know about how much you're going to need, and I always round up, I then take that amount and I divide it by 12 because I usually plan a year in advance. But you if you've got six months, if you're going to do this for this summer and you've got about six months, then you divide it by six. So you want to keep in mind, are you going to be using your paychecks weekly or bi-weekly or monthly, however you get paid? Are you going to be using tax return funds? Are you going to be using bonuses? So you keep all those ideas in mind and break it out and divide it accordingly. And then every month you make sure you hit that goal. Once you have that savings account set up, you can have it also set to where it will automatically transfer from your main account to your travel account a set amount. So therefore you don't have to see it, you don't have to transfer it, you don't have to be mindful of the fact that it's there until you every now and then you take a look at it and see you'll be surprised at how fast it'll grow because you're not looking at it, you're not paying attention to it and when you do you're like wow okay I'm well on my way to this ultimate vacation, to this ultimate travel.
destination if your travel destination requires you to fly whether it's in the United States or whether it's uh, international you want to make sure you purchase your tickets in advance um, you're probably going to be looking at two to three months in advance so that you can get the best deal you get the best bang for your buck so in the United States the airline tickets tend to go up in May and they tend to stay there until about August then they drop again and then they go right back up again as we get closer to November closer to Thanksgiving then they drop again after the new year and they're pretty much there until right around the time when people start to travel for spring summer so I try to make sure I buy my tickets during the low period in that low in between January and April is usually when I buy my airline tickets so that I can get the best pricing I also make sure if I'm buying airline tickets that I buy the insurance it's just worth it you guys if you're purchasing airline tickets that far in advance I know that extra uh, that extra fee can uh, be a pain in the butt but it is a peace of mind because if something happens uh, if something happens to the company that you're working with if something happens on your end if it's a, an act of, of mother nature you want to know that you can get your funds back it just makes sense to have that extra precaution that if for some reason you were unable to to continue on with this trip you can get your money back that's peace of mind for me so I do make sure I try and buy my tickets early uh, as early as I possibly can when I have cross the threshold where I've gotten enough money to actually purchase the tickets I usually do travel may not be as much of a priority for your family as it is for my family um, but if it is if in fact travel is something that you've decided that you enjoy doing and we do we've decided to make that a priority for us we uh, we save and budget accordingly there are certain things that we uh, don't necessarily cut out of our lives but we pull back on so you know you kind of do the things you you have to do so that you can do the things that you want to do I pull back on some of the things because date night to me is a necessity but um, I try and make sure I do things that we can do for less I try and make sure we tune we tune into those things I try and make sure we budget and save uh, as much as we can without denying ourselves any pleasures I meal prep so I try and make sure I prep things that are interesting and good for myself and for my husband uh, for my family so that we will enjoy taking our lunches sometimes and, and being able to squirrel away as much money as we can so that we can enjoy our ultimate travels But in the beginning, one of the things that we did was we took a look at our budget. We looked at our expenditures and saw what areas we could tighten up, what areas we could get rid of, uh, what areas could we not get rid of, <laughs> what things we were willing to compromise on and what willing, things we were not willing to compromise on. And that's how we began to uh, begin our budgeting process you have to evaluate your actual expenditures your household expenditures then we set up a separate travel account we had already picked our destination we determined the amount we're willing to spend on our credit cards and what we're willing to pay in cash our goal when we travel is to pay cash for as much as we possibly can we try to never go on vacation uh, with vacation debt on our credit cards we still use the credit card to buy the things that we're going to buy but we already have the money put away in the savings account so we get the points by using the credit card but then we come right behind it and pay that off you can always take advantage of using your points uh, to upgrade at hotels and on the airline these are just a few of the ideas that we use that work for us that I thought that I would share with you all um, I think if you give them a try and incorporate them into what you already use and if you don't already have a plan set up uh, this is a great way to start and before you know it you'll have the funds that you need to take the vacations that you and your family enjoy the most and you can do it annually and that's a wrap I hope you enjoyed my budgeting and saving ideas for travel in 2020. And on that note, have a blessed day. I'll see you right back here 
next time on Creative Glam. Don't forget to click one of the links at the end of this video to see more home decor and travel ideas at Creative Glam. Bye!